You remember Joan Rivers, the comedian? She used to say, can we talk? That's how I feel this morning. Can we talk? I have a lot of thoughts, and I know Ray Merriman does too. Hi, Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. As we begin a new month, October 1st, and boy, is this one going to be loaded. So we're going to jump right into the MMA Cycles newsletter. This is on the MMACycles.com website. Up at the top, you can click the free newsletter, free weekly forecast, and this is for the week of October 3rd, the one ahead as we review the one behind. Let's begin, this time with a quote from the Wall Street Journal from yesterday. Stocks close lower Friday. (laughs) That laugh was my um, addition. Ending the third quarter on a downbeat note, as investors fretted about the path ahead for earnings, interest rates, and global economic growth. All three indexes are down at least 21% for the year. The S&P 500, NASDAQ, and small cap Russell 2000 are all now on three quarter losing streaks for the first time since 2009. And this from CNBC.com, also from yesterday, Fed Vice Chair Lael Brainerd on Friday underscored the need to bring down inflation, saying the central bank is committed to avoiding pulling back prematurely on restrictive monetary policy. Now the commentary from Ray Merriman, who has been doing this, remind you, for over 40 years. With six planets retrograde, we will see about that, the quote above. It's been a rough Mercury retrograde cycle, September 10th through tomorrow, October 2nd, from a geocosmic perspective, because it has coincided with the most potent celestial pattern of the year involving Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus all in hard aspects to each other. First, we are now completing the fourth and last passage of the 45-year Saturn-Uranus waning square cycle, a combination that has coincided with widespread supply chain disruptions and a major contributor to the highest inflation numbers in 40 years. It is also coinciding with world chaos as major economic systems and financial markets are breaking down and fears, Saturn, of a third world war are increasing. The U.S. dollar is soaring as the Fed sharply increases interest rates to fight inflation and other currencies like the British pound, the euro and yen are collapsing to new decade and even record lows. At the same time, Russia's Putin is attempting to annex part of Ukraine while threatening a nuclear strike if Western powers interfere with his sham elections. Did the people who were displaced from these territories get to vote? Secondly, Jupiter made a double semi-square, a hard aspect, to both Saturn and Uranus in the past ten days. Uranus has the power to break support or resistance in the markets, which is the domain of Saturn, and Jupiter does everything in a big way. So many stock markets broke to new yearly lows last week. U.S. Treasuries broke to their lowest level since November 2007, and the British pound to its lowest level ever. Third, Mercury has been retrograde for the past three weeks, The last high was the half-primary cycle crest of September 12th at the Dow 32,504. It was on the first trading day after it turned retrograde. Yesterday, Friday, September 30th, the last trading day before Mercury turns direct, the Dow was at 28,715, a loss of nearly 4,000 points in less than three weeks. When a market makes a cycle high near the time Mercury, Venus, or Mars turns retrograde, it will often make its cycle low near the time that it turns direct. This probably is the only study offering some hope at the moment for bulls. However, that is exactly the psychological climate when markets do reverse. That is, when investor sentiment, collective psychology, is most bearish, is often near the time when the rallies begin. And now that Mercury is turning direct, 
and Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus are breaking up their difficult aspect formation with one another, there is a cosmic reason to think a bottom of some importance could be close at hand. And now the short-term geocosmics and longer-term thoughts, starting with a quote from the Bill Maher HBO show from Vivek Ramaswamy. He said, Victimization fits laziness like a glove as victimhood becomes a currency. And this from Peggy Noonan in an article in the Wall Street Journal this weekend. Importantly, she says, there was this from John F. Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis with Russia, quoting, Above all, while defending our own vital interests, nuclear powers must avert those confrontations which bring an adversary to a choice of either a humiliating retreat or a nuclear war. Choosing that path would be evidence of a collective death wish for the world. End quote. Noonan continues, Kennedy's insight that nuclear weapons changed the facts of history was shared by Ronald Reagan. Like Kennedy, he respected Russia's nuclear arsenal. Reagan said privately and publicly that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. End quote from the article. Now Ray's commentary. If we were analyzing or trading the stock market purely on geocosmic studies, we would consider buying now, for this current cosmic setup exemplifies the basic principle of market timing using geocosmics. That is, the middle of the heaviest planetary transits, that is, aspects or stations, is when markets most often reverse their trends. That is happening now from September 21st through the 28th, plus or minus a week. There are two exceptions to this basic principle, however, Mercury retrograde and strong aspects involving Uranus. Instead of reversals, Uranus can coincide with breakouts that tend to be extreme and last approximately four to eight trading days after they are exact. With Mercury retrograde, you often get a day or two of rallies, and it appears the trend has changed, only to see the trickster violating those signals in what is known as fakeouts. This is why we do not advise position trading during Mercury retrograde, a rule that has served us well during the last three weeks, although our very short-term trading strategies worked out very well. This trickster behavior can continue as long as five days after Mercury turns direct. Thus, even though the actual bottom might be happening right now in many markets, it is also possible this instability and erraticism could last another week. But even then, a respite might be short-lived, because on October 23rd, Saturn will turn direct, and then, on October 30th, Mars will turn retrograde. It's like a broken automobile that gets repaired and then breaks down again until you actually solve the cause of the breakdown, which might involve having to replace the part or system altogether. We recently posted on Twitter, If you can't stand the wind, go inside and close the door until the storm passes. In real terms, the wind was much more than just a wind this time. It was a hurricane. And in other tweets, we discussed this September 21 through 28 period, plus or minus a week, as a cosmic and mundane hurricane as well. Hurricane Ian has been that and more. Going inside and closing your doors would not have helped in that case. You needed to evacuate. Closing your financial positions and standing aside, which was the market message for traders, would have helped for many. But many people in line of Hurricane Ian have lost their homes, which is a true tragedy. Unfortunately, this tragedy also fits the nature of Uranus, high winds, being squared by Saturn, loss, and semi-squared by Jupiter, excessive. Regarding mundane threats to world peace, there are two things I would like to bring up. First, Mars will turn retrograde on October 30th, 
at 25 degrees 36 minutes Gemini. It will form a square to transiting Neptune in Pisces three times between 23 and 25 degrees of Gemini in Pisces. That happens between October 12th and March 15th of 2023. The country of Iran's natal chart has Mars at 25 degrees 31 minutes Pisces, square to Neptune at 20 degrees 28 minutes Sagittarius. The United States has Mars at 19 degrees 51 minutes Gemini, squaring Neptune at 22 degrees 22 minutes Virgo. In other words, there is a grand mutable square between Mars and Neptune in the charts of both nations over the next five months. And during that time, Mars will be retrograde from October 30th through January 12th and touching off these aspects in the U.S. and Iranian charts. Iran is undergoing major protests now, which could threaten and even succeed in dismantling the current regime. The U.S. could be drawn into this. At the same time, it is on the brink of a possible nuclear event ignited by Russia. Russia has just escalated its conflict with Ukraine as Mars is about to turn retrograde, and in fact, while six planets are retrograde now. In previous columns here, going back to spring, we had discussed how the tide could likely turn in favor of Ukraine based on these retrogrades, especially Mars, as well as the one-eighth semi-square cycle of Jupiter to Saturn. And now, here we are. Russia is escalating again as the next important signature approaches, Mars retrograde. This is our second point, which we describe once again. Mars retrograde is the time when the aggressor is usually the loser. The good news is that all of this can end in spring when the final Jupiter-Saturn semi-square takes place on March 21st. And Jupiter will then proceed to its favorable sextile with Saturn on June 19th. Spring cannot come fast enough. We need to be strong and not lazy while Mars is in retrograde. Our leaders need to be too. Venus just entered Libra on September 29th, where it will remain until October 23rd. This can be favorable for compromises. It may also be favorable for equity markets, although silver tends to decline during that time. Rather than seeing yourself as victim in this unstable time, see it as an opportunity. For instance, if other studies show a tradable low is forming in silver and or crude oil, consider it. These two markets are highlighted the next three weeks. Stay strong. Be conscious of your health and stay warm as winter approaches. And Mars squares Neptune, which relates to the immune system and the blood cells, red and white. Reach out to help those in need, Mars, Neptune. But don't let yourself become a victim to those who are lazy and prey on woe-is-me themes of victimization and exhibit passive-aggressive behaviors, the other expressions of Mars and Neptune. And that concludes the MMA Cycles newsletter for this week. Now, I came across something yesterday, in fact, on Friday, that was kind of a showstopper for me. And I'd like to summarize that here. And Monday's Fun Astrology podcast, we will talk about October ahead. But one of the signatures of the month, in addition to the eclipse at the end of the month, and then followed, of course, in two weeks on Election Day, with the second of the two eclipse season, we have three planets turning direct from their retrograde paths in October. So coming out of retrograde, Mercury, Pluto, and Saturn going into retrograde, as mentioned, Mars. I wish I could tell you who this guy was, <laughs> but I'll tell you he was making total sense. So he basically went back and tied the cycles that we are under that Ray Merriman has been talking about 
and also we've been talking about on the Fun Astrology podcast, these 90- and 45-year cycles and 20-year cycles, and tied them to the market crashes going back as far as 1842, 1907, 1929, 1987, 97, 2008, and 2020. And the guy mentioned, which is so true, that astrologers on Wall Street are not interested in predictive astrology from the sense of uh, how you would think of horary or some other type of predictive technique. What they're interested in is how do things correlate to the past and then bringing that information forward. So here's one of these four examples. So if you take the crashes of 1929, 87, and 97, and again in 2008, all of those happened on the same date if you were looking at it from a lunar calendar, not a solar calendar. Wow. And that date in the lunar calendar correlation to 2022 is October 21st. So that would be a pretty significant date to etch in your mind. The other date right next door to that would be the October 25th eclipse. Maybe not as a trigger, but certainly as some kind of stage-setting pivot point. Now, I want to step aside here for just a second. Is this an advocation that a crash is going to happen? No. This is saying what has happened in the past and how does it correlate to today? There are a lot of vocal people right now who are saying that the market is going to crash in October. My dad was a stockbroker. I've been following this since I was in high school. And a lot of people have always said that the market is going to crash in October. So let's not let's say I don't want to get this out of character here. But it does do us well to know what's going on. All right, another correlation was made by a guy that used to write newsletters back in the day, Arch Crawford. He's retired now, but he was mentioning the Mars-Uranus conjunction in August, and that was August 15th, 16th, was the top of this latest wave of downtrend that has been basically straight down since then. And then the other piece of the puzzle are the Jewish holidays from the Jewish calendar. Primarily, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which was September 25 through 27. Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year of atonement, the Day of Atonement, from sunset October 4th to sunset October 5th. And then, as this guy was saying, all of those dates culminated, basically, at the Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, this year, October 9th through the 16th. All of this, even though I'm not Jewish, is something that was very heavily discussed in our family because my mother tracked this like clockwork every year. And there is, from a Wall Street perspective, a definite correlation between these crashes and those dates mentioned. Now, one more piece of background, then we're going to pull all this together, and then we'll be out of here. The past crashes, except for two we're always in the neighborhood of 34 or 35%, right? Ray just mentioned we are so far down 21% this year. The two that were greater than that were the two big ones, 1842 and 1932. Those were in the range of 80%. That's the 90-year cycle, 1842, 1932, 2022, we are there. If you double the 20-year cycle to the 40-year cycle, 1942, 1982, 2022, those also have been bottom, market bottoms, excellent times to buy. And this is where we have to watch what's going on because the guy said we could be on the brink of an insane bull market that's about to begin. But more likely, here is what he was thinking this could look like if it goes parallel to these crash years. And this is just being forewarned, all right? So he was saying, if this parallels one of the crashes, it would be on that 90-year cycle and would be big. I don't know that there's anything other than just all the craziness that's going on in the world 
But, you know, those other two crashes didn't have circuit breakers and some of the things that are built in today. So can we correlate 1842 and 1932 to 2022 from that technological standpoint? I don't know. It's not going to happen in one day, I'll tell you that. Uh, If it's going to be 60% and we're already 20% in, well, you know, is that possible in October? The other thing he was mentioning is if there is a crash, there's going to be a lot of institutional money and he's even speculating Fed money, government money, stepping in to buy. So it's one of those things that if you've missed the sell-off at this point, and you're thinking about your portfolio, and this is not financial advice. This is me reading a newsletter and listening to an, a pres- an interview between a couple of people saying, hmm, you know what, to me that makes some sense, and I wanted to communicate it to you. But having a posi- or being in a position to buy when everyone else is selling has historically always made money. What I would say is make sure you're aligned not with the fear be aligned with the opportunity. You've got to think, what is Goldman doing right now? What is J.P. Morgan doing right now? What is BlackRock doing right now? Where are they getting in position? But here's what this guy was thinking. He was saying, and this is what caught my attention, that if this parallels, that it would begin with a sharp move down starting August 16th. Go back and look at the Dow or the S&P 500, that was the most recent top. He said it should be over. This first down wave would be the steep selling would be over by September 23rd. Well, we're a week past that. Yesterday's close, the market sold off. Typically, that would continue into Sunday night when the Globex market opens and into Monday. Could Monday be a crash day based on that selling? A lot of people would argue that it could be. But whenever this bottoms, then there would be a sharp turnaround, maybe even as short as three days, a really fast but really furious rally. And then, as he was saying, if there's going to be a parallel to these crash years, it would happen somewhere in the first three weeks of October. And then there were some things that were discussed about this continuing on into November. And, of course, that's where we bring in the two eclipses on October 25th and November 8th, the election, what could happen after the election. I mean, there's just so many things that are ahead of us over these next about eight weeks that, as Ray said, we do have to stay strong and we do have to remain diligent. Now, that was all basically just to make you aware of a perspective. Let me give the disclaimer. As we say on here every week, this is not financial advice. I just mentioned that. This is opinion and reading things that other people have studied. And I'm saying from my perspective of the history that I've been trading and following the markets and following the astrology, I don't disagree with either opinion that you've heard today, Ray's or this other interview. And given from the perspective of making your own decisions, consulting with your family, consulting with your financial advisor, all of the proper things that you should do with your portfolio and with your decisions, factoring in these elements that have a consistent pattern of influencing the markets, especially in September and October. And remember, we flipped this around, and in in January, historically, has always been a pretty good month to buy. The January effect, right? As goes January, goes the rest of the year. So a lot of this depends on your investment strategy. But I just wanted you to know what the sky, what history, what the cycles all could possibly be pointing to. There's one other thing that I'll wrap up with, and that is that from my own experience of watching this for quite a while, when people talk about it too much, it doesn't happen. It's almost like when people put so much energy out there, it chases the whatever they're talking about under a rock. There has been a lot, I mean a lot, of prediction and forecasting and discussion around this thing just completely imploding which would tilt us toward that it isn't going to. I think 
maybe the best takeaway from all of this is to know where the crowd is going, but don't follow them. In fact, slip out the back of the line and go the other direction. You'll be a lot better. (laughs) That tends to work out well, whatever that means for you. All right, hope this helps. We'll see you Monday on the Fun Astrology Podcast.